So this is the opening shot of the movie. And uh, the main purpose of it is to really draw the audience into the movie. The shot starts off with the candle lighting itself and illuminating the main title, which uh, introduces the theme of uh, stage magic. The candle then illuminates what appears to be an old postcard of uh, Paris, which is, of course, uh, an image that we put together. And that image then comes alive and turns into a three-dimensional crane shot that takes us down to the theater and basically into the action of the movie. Pinewood Studios, just outside London, and the film of Andrew Lloyd Webber's The Phantom of the Opera will use eight sound stages and the back lot to bring the $95 million production to the screen. Marshalling a huge team of actors, craftsmen, designers and technicians, Joel Schumacher is directing the most expensive independent film ever made. going to make it probably about 14, 15 years ago with Michael Crawford and Sarah Brightman. Close your eyes and let music set you free. Only then can you Then, frankly, I started to split up with Sarah and, um, you know, things were getting a bit bumpy between us. We had to put it on the shelf for a minute there. The two of them have remained friends ever since. So off and on for 14 years, they've talked about the project. And then when it became a reality and we were really going to go out and make it, um, Andrew phoned Joel, who happened to be in London. Uh, so Joel and I had dinner. And in the course of the dinner, I, I just said to him, what about the Phantom of the Opera? Don't you think it's time now? And Joel just said, yes. Intoxication Touch me Trust me Savor each sensation Let the dream begin Let your darker side give in To the power of the music that I want Filming will take four months and involves dressing and styling hundreds of extras for scenes in and around the opera house. Do it for real, make it real, please. If you make it real in your head, it will look real. <laughs> Set construction on this film is more than we spent on The Last Mission Impossible. I always use the thing, a sense that you, you should never be able to build anything be done on location, right? everything should look as if it's been designed for the film. And here is the main auditorium of Opera House, which is in composite with the stage. Joel Schumacher has a big background anyway in design and costume and sets. The first thing he said, I want the theatre to be sexy. We could have found a theatre to shoot in, but we wanted to build our own theatre because the theatre is one of the characters in the movie. 
Joel wanted the feel of the film to have a sort of heightened reality. After all, it is a sort of soaring gothic romance. Obviously, there are certain big names for The Phantom who, over the years, people wanted to play it, and, you know, the usual suspects all came up. I didn't want to do a middle-aged film, so I said to Andrew, I would do it on one condition, that the cast was very young, because I felt that the story, there's an innocence, especially to Christine's character, and I thought if the cast got middle-aged that it wouldn't flow for the romance of the story. Not that middle-aged people can't have romance, but I felt that Christine's character especially is so innocent that her, I think that youth would assist it. Jerry Butler I knew, and his audition was the most difficult because Andrew didn't know who he was. He was a nervous wreck, and he had to come into a room about this size, and Andrew pulled up a chair and sat down, and... I'm about to sing Music of the Night for the composer, one of the most famous songs of all time, and my legs started shaking, because I was surprised that just... that I hadn't been that nervous up until I was standing by the piano. Slowly, gently, night unfurls its blender Grasp it, sense it, tremulous and tender. Think of me, think of me fondly when we've said goodbye. Remember me once in a while. Please promise me you'll try. She came in at the last second, and, um, almost didn't screen test because she had to go to a family reunion in Las Vegas and I had to talk her out of it, <laughs> which I think was kind of heartbreaking when you're 16 and you have your heart set on something. But I got on a plane and I was there and I, I wasn't expecting it to be like it was at all. It was a big, full-blown, very kind of old Hollywood screen test. It was very Joel. Patrick Wilson I had seen on the stage and I knew he sang beautifully. He was the first person I cast. He, he plays Raoul, and he walked in the room, and um, I just, we just gave him the part right away. And I said, just go and sing for Andrew. In the show, Raoul has a very minor role in the triangle, and in our version, he's really a very aggressive, swashbuckling kind of romantic hero. Wait! Raoul! Whatever you believe. This man, this thing, is not your father. <gasps> Certainly then, in those times, you know, you lived life very dramatically, you know, uh, a lot of love, love and death. You know, you died young, so you, when you found someone you loved, you went after it and you got it. Little Lottie thought, am I fonder of dolls or of goblins or shoes? <laughs> Or of riddles or frocks. Those picnics in the attic. Or of chocolates. I think Christine's relationship with Raoul, that's really her romantic awakening as a teenager. But I think that her pull towards the phantom, towards very Jerry Butler, is a very sexual, very deep, very soulful union. I think designing on Phantom has been a particular challenge. Normally, um, a film script has one or two challenges in it. Phantom has three operas, two ballets, and a masquerade, and a storyline. So there's an amazing range. 
It's pretty challenging because you've got this massive set, uh, huge staircase, you've got all the second level, and it requires lots of people in it. And so immediately you've got, you know, you're dealing with, uh, in this case, 120 people, um, combined with the fact that the masquerade, uh, where it appears in the movie, um, it's a kind of, it's a big spectacle moment. But the biggest spectacle is the climax of the film, featuring the crashing of the chandelier. I've got 30 stunt guys here today and we're dropping this huge chandelier, as you can see, um, which has all been set up. It's taken a week to set this up, you know, with the rigs we've got up above, so it's quite difficult. And we need to give one take at this, so we just, at the moment, as you can see, a lot of work going on. Uh, preparing it, then we bring the stunt guys in and place them around in the orchestra pit and they're around the seat, so we want to try and get them as close as possible to the chandelier when it comes down. She weighs now 531 kilos. She'll travel at approximately two metres a second along the track, lowering from about 13 feet above the floor level down to 18 inches, when it will strike the front of the orchestra pit wall, smashing its way through that. There'll then be a big fireball come up through the wreckage, and the top half of it should scatter onto the stage, causing more fire. Having only one chandelier to crash, there can be no mistakes. It's vital that everyone is properly prepared, especially the stunt people who will have to get out of the way safely. But some members of the audience are not going to be moving anywhere. Theatre is live theatre, and there's no replacement for that. So my job was, well, how do we make a film that might be exciting for a film audience that tells this story? And film gives you such freedom to go places and do things you can't do in the stage. Film allows you to, to get really in there, and you really see what's going on in someone's eyes. and. Um, you know, that's one of the real benefits of being able to do a movie. The film will certainly appeal to all those people who've seen and enjoyed the stage show. But more than that, the, the show has only visited something like 16 countries around the world. The film can go so much wider. I think it's a fantastic movie. I think it stands in its own right. Um, it's a different thing to the stage show, but it hasn't in any way um, sort of challenged the stage show in any way. It's, it's, it's taken, uh, I think, it, 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 the material, said this is a film, we are making a film version of it. Um, I mean, it's not at all based on the, on, on the theatre visually or direction-wise, but it's still got exactly the same essence. That's all I could have ever hoped for.